And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Welcome to Sounds of Revival, a program and teaching ministry calling for the church to hear and respond to the sounds of revival, which are calling us back to our first love and back to our place of holiness and dominion in the earth. Sounds of Revival is brought to you by Greater Love International Church and Revival Center, located here in the city of Indianapolis at 6433 East Washington Street, where the pastor and founder is Bishop Perry E. Jackson. And now, Sounds of Revival. God bless you and welcome to our program, Sounds of Revival. Brought to you by Greater Love International Church and Revival Center. Well, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank God for the opportunity to just have another day to serve God. Have a day with purpose. The Bible said in the book of um, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. So each day you should have a vision. but It should be the proper vision, Lord. So we are glad to be here because we know what our purpose is. You know, sometimes people have this idea about life, somewhat nonchalant attitude, but we know that we are born with a purpose. Like God told Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 5, he said this, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of your mother's womb, I ordained you and sanctified you a prophet to the nation. In other words, God was telling Jeremiah, I, before you were born, I had an assignment upon your life. So you were born with purpose. You have a purpose for being here, a purpose, and you have something I want you to do. And also, this is what, when we're born again, that's what really comes into full light. Why were you born again? Why are you here? For the glory of God. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says this, you are ambassadors for Christ. You represent Christ. This is what your purpose in life is, not to do our own thing, but to do God's thing. Amen. Well, we have a word for today that I'm going to um, teach through the Holy Spirit. I'm sure it's going to be a blessing to you. But also, at the end of the program, we're going to have a code that you can put into your um, Google, into your computer, or into your cell phone, and you will be able to actually um, pick up the program again. Bottom line, if you want to hear the program again, now get a pencil and paper, so at the end of this broadcast, we'll give you a code that you can uh, write it down, then you can put into your computer or into your um, cell phone, Google it in, and you'll be able to listen to the program again. This is important sometimes because I watch TV on programs, and uh, the word kind of touched my heart, and um, I more or less have thought maybe it would be a good thing if I could listen to that again. Well, um, you can do it today. So at the end of the program, we'll have that information how you can, this program that you're seeing right now, you can actually uh, put that code in and you can hear it again if you need to hear it again and um, need to catch something that you might have missed. Well, today we're going to talk about Jesus' mission and Jesus' purpose. And Jesus' mission and Jesus' purpose is what we're all about. And we're going to um, look at this um, purpose from the perspective of we have a chart here entitled one of the subjects is entitled Luke 4.18 talks about the mission of Jesus Project Freedom 7 Project Freedom 7 and this alludes to the fact that Jesus Christ himself he had a mission he would sit here on a he had a project he had to complete and so Luke 4, 18 talks about Jesus' purpose, which involved all of us. You and I are involved intimately in God's purpose. So Luke chapter 4, verse 18, remember Jesus announced his, his uh, purpose in, to the people when he said on his first sermon in the, in the temple, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted preach deliverance to the captives, recover your sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Again, the topic is freedom, project, 
freedom seven. In essence, there are seven areas of freedom that Jesus Christ died to give you and I freedom in. And these seven areas also, they speak of the fact that Satan wants to bind us up in these seven areas. So it's a wonderful thing to understand what you are liberated from. Remember again, Luke 4, 18. Listen to that very closely. Luke 4, 18. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now this is his first sermon when he introduced himself to mankind as, as after um, he was 30 years old, glory to God, and then he began to preach. And he, his first, what we call trial sermon, he went to church, the temple, and he opened the book, and he went to Isaiah chapter 61, which is, he quoted in Luke 4, 18, and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives. Did you get that? Preach deliverance. If you are captive, bound in any ways, I'm going to preach deliverance to you and set you free. Because when you hear the word, then that word can set us free. So he said, one of my missions was to preach deliverance to the captive, recover your sight to the blind. If your eyes are blind, you know something, not only is he talking about blinding the eyes of sinners, but after we are born again, Satan still tries to blind our eyes. Remember, in the book of Revelation chapter 3, he told the church of Laodicea, you're blind. He said, you are wretched and miserable, poor, blind. So God has a mission also. Many of God's children are blind to certain things that are already theirs in Christ. Many of God's Christians, many of God's people are just uh, unaware of what their rights are in God. Many of God's people are unaware that healing was purchased for them 2,000 years ago. Many of God's children are blind and ignorant to the fact that they don't have to have a sin popping up in their life every other day. But the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter um, 6, verse number 14, sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Why do we say that? Because throughout the Bible, even in the New Testament, Paul was chastising the people for what is this sin doing in your life? Jesus Christ died to set you free. Jesus Christ died that you would not be bound to sin. And all those, um, as we say, I can't help it. You know, sometimes that te testimony is lit given with people before they get born again. They say, I had it, can't help it, but God delivered me. But it's strange, after people are born again in a while, they get, they, they get the can't help us back again. Can't help this, can't help that, can't help lying, can't help cussing, can't help committing fornication, can't help committing adultery, can't help looking at pornography, can't help being a homosexual. You get the can't help us again. So what we're saying here is that God's people need the same message. The message was, of course, again, Luke 4, 18, this um, product, product, project, Freedom 7, the seven areas that you are free in, then you need to know that God set you free so you don't have to be bound in those areas. So again, we need to understand that this Luke 4, 18, Jesus' mission, glory to God, is actually relevant not only to sinners but also to saints of God. Uh, it's amazing. You know, Peter talked about saints of God who, who were once born again. He said, like a dog turning again to his vomit and like a, a pig going back to the mire after they've been straightened up again. So we Christians need to know we've been free. You know, the Bible did say also in the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse number 1, it said this, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Talking to Christians. Did you get that? Let me, again, Galatians chapter 5, verse number 1. Like he's saying Christians, he's talking to Christians. This Galatians was a book, a um, letter written to the church in Galatians, okay? But yet, he's talking to Christians, saying, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free. In other words, Christ has made you free. Now you've got to hold on to your freedom. It's not just enough to get free, but so the second clause of that Galatians chapter 5, verse number 1, after he said, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free. And then he says something strange. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Christian, watch out. You've been delivered. You've been set free. But now... You 
have to be careful. Satan can take you right back to that bondage, take you right back to that hell hole that God delivered you from, take you back right to that pit that God took you out of, take you back to that way of living which is totally unacceptable to God. He can take you all the way back. Hallelujah. And one strange thing about that, not only can he take you back, but he can take you back while you sit in the, in the, in the church pew. In other words, you can be coming to church and doing this, Think you're still saved, but have lost your salvation, lost your relationship with Jesus Christ. Still singing hallelujah, still singing in the choir, still preaching, still pastoring, oops, still pastoring and out of the will of God. Back in the bondage and not even know it. That's just how the Bible said about Satan, that if it were possible, he would deceive the very elect of God. Satan is a father of lies. Jesus says Satan is a liar and the father of it. What does that mean? Satan lied and he tells good lies. Amen. He will deceive you if you give him uh, a door. Hallelujah. If you let him get his foot in the door, you don't want to give any place to the devil. So this message of freedom is to all of us and we need to hear it again and again because again there are certain areas in our life that we have been um, set free from. But some Christians are very ignorant. And the Bible said that through knowledge shall the just be delivered, Proverbs 11 and 9. And then also in the book of Hosea, chapter um, 6, talks about the fact that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So you can be destroyed. Satan can, he can hurt you. He can devastate your life. He can steal from you. John 10, 10, the Bible, Jesus said, the thief cometh not before to steal kill and destroy. He was talking about the devil. Saints, don't get too, um, too uh, glory to God, too snug and too more or less have a false sense of security. Satan can hurt you. Satan can shake your world. Hallelujah. Satan can do much damage to you. Again, Jesus said it, John 10, 10, the thief, the devil, come not before to steal kill and destroy. And he steals so much from Christians because we got that little know-it-all spirit and we feel because we've been born again, everything is taken care of. No. Throughout the Bible, we are warned, glory to God, that not that God had given you your salvation, then you got to stand for it. The Bible said in the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse number 3, it said this, glory to God, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints, Okay, you were born again by Ephesians 2, 8. By grace are you saved through faith, through faith, through faith, and that not of yourself. Okay, you've been saved by grace. But then, so you've been saved. But then now we get a warning again, Jude chapter 1, verse number 3. Earnestly contend. You got a fight on your hands. Earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto you. That faith that you received when you were born again. That faith that made you feel wonderful. That faith that made you feel like God was your father. That faith that brought you closer to God. That faith that just picked you up, turned you around. But now that you got it, he said, contend for it. Fight for it because you have an adversary who's going to try to pull you down. He's going to try to steal from you. So now Jesus Christ said, again, his mission on earth was a, a mission of freedom. And when we look again at Luke 4, 18, the latter clause, he said that to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. Actually, if you, most of us, because we are Americans or we were not Jews at, at that time, Jews knew what that meant to decree the accessible year of the Lord. Bottom line, they had at the time of Jesus what they call a year of jubilee. Every 50 years, all deaths were canceled. Every 50 years, people were set free. Glory to God, it was a year of freedom. And um, if, if you were a slave, glory to God, you were set free. So bottom line, when Jesus proclaimed in Luke 4, 18, that um, he came to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, that meant so much more to them than it means to us now because they knew exactly what he was referring to. But now Jesus declares freedom to us in the spirit realm, and we can, set, we can walk free from so many things. All right, now, here we talk about seven areas of, in our lives, in Christian lives, where people, God people are free, but they don't know it. Glory to God. They have been set free through the power of God. And remember, if you don't know 
Son, if you don't know you've been set free, if you don't know what your rights are, then Satan can steal from you. So we have 70 areas that God's people are too many times caught not knowing their rights, not knowing what Christ had done for them. So we're dealing with the fact that we're just going to just talk about these 70 areas of freedom that God's people should be walking in. But the thing about that is many times they are not walking in it. Matter of fact, they were actually denied the fact that freedom had been given to them. For example, Isaiah chapter 53, go to God, verse number 5, talks like he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we are healed. You, it's a done deal. But you know there are some Christians who feel like healing is not for today. Some born-again Christians, they are taught by their leaders that miracles have passed away. Help. God doesn't heal people anymore. I don't know when he stopped because the Bible said, Hebrew 13, 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So he's saying, but anyway, people fall for the lie that I'm just giving you an understanding that Satan does come and trip people up. He calls the Christians to believe lies. Amen. And so some Christians believe, well, when sickness comes upon me, then it must be a gift from the Lord. And if, and if I'm sick, Glory to God, then I'm going to just thank God for the sickness and, and because God gave me this sickness to teach me something. Hey, God doesn't have to have the, um, the devil and the sickness to teach you something. God is a good teacher. He doesn't need Satan to um, use his tools to teach you. God got various ways of teaching us. The Bible says in the book of St. John chapter 14 verse 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father shall send in my name, he shall teach you all things. The Holy Ghost is your teacher. Cancer is not your teacher. Tuberculosis is not your teacher. Arthritis is not your teacher. God is your teacher. Glory to God. So these things, even these diseases, did you know where disease came from? Disease didn't come from God. This is just one of your freedoms. Glory to God. This freedom of being, freedom from sickness, it's real simple. The two million of God's people have fallen into that pit, and they can't get out because they don't know that God did not put them in that pit. They think God, the devil put you in that pit. Sickness and disease came as a result of the fall in the Garden of Eden. That's when sickness and disease came upon man. Sickness and disease is not God's will for you. Glory to God. Sickness is something you have to fight against. Glory to God. Paul said, 1 Corinthians, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, fight the good fight of faith. All your healing is yours, but you're going to sometimes war with healing. War for your healing. Psalm 107, verse 20, the Bible said this, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So you get that word, glory to God, pray the word, study the word, meditate the word on healing, and healing will come forth because healing is God's will for his people. Miracles are God's will for his people. Glory to God. So that's just one area. Seven areas of freedom that God people get tripped up on. Glory to God. In other words, Paul said, when the grace of God comes upon you, he said, the grace of God was not given to me in vain. In other words, Jesus Christ had died for your freedom even in that area. Glory to God. Oh, let me tell you something else. Even this coronavirus, some Christians are just scared out of their wits. Scared, as they say, to death. Almost having nervous breakdown because of coronavirus. But the Bible got you covered. Hallelujah. Psalm 91. Glory to God. There shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. You are protected, not going to be protected. You are already protected if you believe it. But the Bible says, as your faith is, so be it unto you. So if you don't believe that God can protect you from coronavirus, then um, you get what you believe. You get what you say. If you say you don't know what you're going to do, if you, if you say, well, I don't know what's going to happen, if you say that, that um, it's just uh, um, I'm, I'm lucky that I haven't been um, affected yet. Well, then your trust is in Lady Luck. Lady Luck hasn't done anything for anybody lately. Hallelujah. Especially not Christians. You don't trust in Lady Luck. If you don't trust, they trust in good luck. You trust in Almighty God. He's already went ahead of you. The Bible talks about so many diseases in the Bible. My goodness. Glory to God. The name all just all kinds of diseases. That you're, the blood of Jesus has covered you. Glory to God. But if you don't believe it, then you're in trouble. Glory to God. That's just one of the areas that you're set free in. You don't have to fear. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of 
power and of love and of sound mind. And we are not being over spiritual when we say that God will protect you from coronavirus. God will protect you from the bubonic plague. God will protect you from the flu. God will protect you from any germ that's going around in, this, in, the, in the air. Hallelujah, because he said he would. God knew that Satan would cause germs and things to be in this world. So he had, I'm going to give you a battle plan. Hallelujah. And when these diseases try to attack you, then you use the word of God as your shield. As the Bible said, take on you the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fire darts of the enemy. So therefore, even when you are sick, glory to God, let me give you an example. If sickness attacks your body, then the Bible said, call for the elders of the church, James chapter 5, let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and then decree him this Pray over him according to the word of God, and you're healed because they use the word of God. And the same thing when we are um, in situations where there's death all around us. You know, Psalm 91 said this, a thousand will fall to your side, 10,000 at your right hand. What that means? People dying all around you, but it won't touch you. Why? You better believe this, too. It will do you good. It will work for you if you believe it. But if you don't believe it, you might read it and say, well, my pastor told me that... Um, just be careful because you never know. You never know when the coronavirus is going to get you. You never know. You never know. Just, just you know, just stay in the house and hide for three months. Glory to God. Stay in the house. Glory to God. Don't even look outside. Because, hallelujah. No, no, no. That's fear. That draws the enemy. Job chapter 3, verse 25, the Bible said this. Job says this. The thing that I greatly feared is come upon me. That which I was afraid of is coming to me. Fear will draw coronavirus to you. Fear will draw um, flu to you. Fear, fear will draw disease to you. Again, that's the Bible, Job 3.25. Again, the thing that I greatly feared is come upon me. That which I was afraid of is coming to me. So get fear out right now and believe that your God can do anything. Glory to God, Jeremiah 32, verse number 27. Behold, I am the Lord, God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Come on, people, glory to God. This little thing, just this little um, virus, it's little, it's small. And compared to God, hardly. God is on your side, God is in you, God got you covered from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Glory to God. So it can't touch you. Glory to God. The Bible said, touch not my anointed. Are you anointed? Do my prophets no harm. God speaks to diseases. Amen. And tell them to back off because you are God's property. Hallelujah. So again, of course, you should take certain precautions. But I'm just trying to say, you don't fear that, that little coronavirus or any other uh, disease that other people are fearing because that's what people are not saying. They are, they are scared. Amen. No. So Fear is your enemy. So the word of God, so believe God's word. Again, you need to read Psalm 91 every day, okay, to keep your faith built up. Psalm 91 talks about uh, viruses. It talks about plagues. It talks about a thousand will fall to your side. Don't worry, a 10,000 at your right hand. Everybody else, every, everybody in your neighborhood can get coronavirus to the left and right. But that only means it's going to touch you because you got a promise from God that you're already free, hallelujah. And he protects his own property. You belong to God, hallelujah. And diseases of that devil, and the devil doesn't call the shots in your life. That devil doesn't tell, he's not in control of your life. God is in control of your life, hallelujah. And whatever touches you, you have to touch God first, hallelujah. If you believe that, then that's, that's your mask, hallelujah, that you wear. I'm not saying don't wear a mask, but get covered, hallelujah, by the faith and the blood of Jesus. You're covered already. Just like God told the children of Israel, when that death angel came by, put that blood over the doorpost of your house, and the death angel had to pass you by because when he sees the blood, he'll pass over you. And the same thing today. That blood still works today, hallelujah. Take... I, and take, just symbolically, take olive oil and just put it over the doorpost of your house. Take olive oil and just put it over your, over your forehead. Hallelujah. And the devil can't touch this. Hallelujah. Because when he sees the blood, coronavirus has to just keep on going. Uh, coronavirus has to go next door. It can't stop at my house. Hallelujah. Because God is big enough 
to protect me from anything, any disease, word of God, that plagues mankind. God, you free from it already. Project Freedom 7. That's one of the things you're free from, disease. Jesus came. He said you were free from it. Jesus didn't hide. When diseases come, Jesus didn't hide in his house. He said, I can't go out and preach now until this disease, this plague passed by. No. No, 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 no. No, no. I hide in Jesus, not in my house. Hallelujah. Since I'm hiding in Jesus, I can go wherever he tells me to go. Because I want a mission for him. And the devil not in control of my life. And the devil not in control of this world. God is. Hallelujah. So let your faith get a hold of that. Amen. The subject again, Project Freedom 7. Oh, you've been delivered from so much, but the devil has tricked too many people. But you don't have to be tricked. You don't have to be deceived. We can walk by faith and not by sight. And we can have joy when other people are uh, sad and depressed. The joy of the Lord is your strength. God bless you, and we'll talk to you next time. God bless you. And we want to make you an offer today. The Bible says in the book of John chapter um, 14, verse 26, it says this, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father shall send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring unto your remembrance all things, whatsoever I send to you. So if you desire to hear this program again and other programs that we're done, we have a um, code right there on your screen, and you can just Google this code into your um, computer, and Google it in and or in on your cell phone, and you will be able to hear the messages again. So that code, of course, is HTTP, and then it has a code in there, two slashes forward and so forth, and that will actually pop up our program again for you, and you can listen to it again. Because again, sometimes if you listen to a message twice, you can receive something that you did not even receive the first time. So God bless you, and avail yourself to that particular uh, benefit we're offering you right now. God bless. Hello, this is Bishop Jackson here again with my lovely wife, Darisa. We would like to invite you to call our dialing word, Ministry Line. This is not a prayer line, but it is a message for you, a three-minute pre-recorded word of inspiration and encouragement as you may dial this number 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Simply call 317-436-1346. Sounds of Revival was brought to you by Perry Jackson Ministries and Greater Love International Church and Revival Center in Indianapolis at 6433 East Washington Street. Worship Sunday at 8 a.m. and 1030 a.m. Tuesday Bible class at 730 p.m. and Saturday morning Bible class and communion at 8 a.m. Prayer precedes all services. For directions or to receive your free bi-monthly newsletter, call 317-796-0938 or email jackson-perry at att.net. To request today's program or sermon on CD, please send an offering of any amount to Perry Jackson Ministries, P.O. Box 26891. Indianapolis, Indiana 46226. Ask for the offer number on the screen.